Did you see what happened in the Swamps Senate yesterday? You see, we can no longer call it the U.S. Senate because that body no longer serves our people. I don't think many Americans know the gravity of what transpired in the Swamp Senate yesterday. More to the point, I don't think much of, many of us care. That proves out the age-old political axiom, we get the government we deserve. Democrats usher in the beginning of the end. We reflect on a dark day that future historians will focus on when remembering the United States in today's preamble. Yesterday, the Senate shredded the U.S. Constitution and nearly 250 years of precedence by refusing to hold a trial for impeached DHS secretary, the traitorous Alejandro Mayorkas. It was unprecedented. Now, for those of you who are recent products of the Democrats' GovEd system, that means it's never been done before. The Senate has held a trial for every impeached official, unless they died or left office before the trial could be held, every single time until yesterday. The Democrats not only defecated on the U.S. Constitution, they did irreparable damage to our mutual compact and the institution of the Senate. Now, impeachment has been rendered moot as a check on executive power and abuse, ushering in a dictator-like government where the executive is free to harm our people with no consequences. What kind of people would do this? Among the votes to allow Alejandro Mayorkas to get away with what he's done to our country and the laws that he has broken was a vote cast by Swamp Senator Catherine Cortez Masto. This leftist just had one of her staff members killed by an illegal alien who was let into the country by the Biden regime and Alejandro Mayorkas. That's how much Democrats care about their staff. Not the actions of a caring or compassionate people, is it? But we already knew that. Listen to how Texas Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee regards her staff. I don't want you to do a damn thing. I want you to have a brain. I want you to have read it. I want you to say, Congresswoman, it was such and such a day. That's what I want. That's the kind of staff that I want to have. So some stupid other motherfucker did it. You, and, and I don't have the information. Nobody sent me the information. I need to uh, ensure my um, schedule. And, uh, you know, if, if Boo Boo did it, Ab did it, Face did it, then nobody knows a damn thing in my office. Yep. What about the ringleader of the lawless Democrat gang in the Swamp Senate, Chuck Schumer? Mr. Schumer writing on X, quote, impeachment should never be used to settle policy disagreements, end quote. That's what Schumer calls it when the government breaks the law, when the government betrays its own people, a policy disagreement. Mayorkas was accused of breaking Title VIII, USC 1325. He brazenly and openly lied to the Congress. That's against the law. According to the impeachment articles, he intentionally hindered the House investigation into his activities. That's illegal. He created an app used to circumvent lawful entry into the United States. Indefensible, really. But here's the kicker. The Democrats didn't even bother to defend him, nor did they explain why his apparent breaches of law were okay with them. They just killed the trial and our trust, and then walked out. Why? Because they could. 237 years of our nation's history. I don't know that there has been a more shameful day in the United States Senate than today. What we just witnessed was a travesty. It was a travesty <laughs> to the United States Constitution, and it was a travesty to the American people. And it's important to understand why the Democrats did what they did. We're here on the Senate floor right now, but I want the record to reflect. I'm going to do a very accurate count of the number of Democrats who are with, with us. That would be zero, other than the presiding officer, and somebody has to preside. <laughs> why? Why, Senator? Why does anyone have to preside? We live in a once United States where the Democrats can break the rules and break the law with impunity because Republicans let them. In fact, if you want to see a party responsible for shredding our norms, the laws, and our Constitution, history will show the aggressor is always, always the Democrats and the GOP that folds like a cheap tent, never making the Democrats pay a price for their treachery. I want to take you back to 2004. Obama's good friend, 
George W. Bush as president, the Democrats being the architects of destruction of the Constitution. You see, they started using the filibuster in ways it had never been used before. They used it to block judicial nominees. Yes, even minorities who were lovers of liberty, Democrats were vicious in preventing people of color from getting promoted to the bench. That led to the GOP Senate Majority Leader of the time, Bill Frist, to float the idea of going nuclear, reducing the level of votes needed to confirm judges to 50 plus one. The biased press of the Democrats, you know, one of the same, really, melted down. They moaned and complained the GOP were a bunch of tyrants running over the rights of the minority enshrined in our Constitution. And that's when backstabber John McCain rode into action. In an effort to thwart the GOP from going nuclear, Mr. McCain got seven Democrats and seven Republicans to usher in some of Bush's nominees, the Gang of 14. But only the ones Democrats didn't find too constitutional, only ones who were not minorities, only nominees who weren't too rule of law centered. Bill Frist backed down and the fake crisis was averted. Fast forward to 2013, Barack Obama occupied the Oval Office and was trying to cram through anti-American, anti-constitutional activist judges to pack the courts. The GOP filibustered those radical judges just like the Democrats did, but this is where the story all changes. Instead of backing down like Bill Frist, Harry Reid goes nuclear, trouncing the rights of the minority and pushing through all of Barack Obama's left-wing zealots. But that wasn't the only thing that was different. John McCain, a guy who called conservatives wacko birds and his gang of 14, they were nowhere to be found. I imagine the conversation went something like this. John McCain approached his good Democrat friends and said, hey guys, Harry's going nuclear. Time to get the gang back together. And the left-wing Democrats who would sell their own mothers into slavery if it advanced their political agenda just stared blankly at McCain. It's possible one of them told him, John, we really thank you and your Republican colleagues for stabbing your party and your voters in the back for us. We really appreciate it. But we're Democrats. We we don't betray our own. There will be no gang of 14 to stop Democrats. And so it is today. On the same day that Chuck Schumer and his Senate Democrats admitted that his party no longer feels bound by the Constitution and our laws, the same day that Democrats shredded the U.S. Constitution and turned their back on nearly 250 years of our shared history, the GOP over in the House pushed to give the Democrats everything they want, sending billions of your taxpayer dollars overseas while our borders remain wide open to a terrorist attack the FBI says is imminent. If conservatives and GOP voters had representation in Washington, the response from Speaker Johnson to Chuck Schumer and his unconstitutional party would be no. The Speaker would say, if you don't feel bound by the Constitution any longer, then I don't feel bound to take up any of your legislation. But that's not what's going to happen. History shows that Democrats will break the Constitution, break the law, break faith with their voters, do anything they have to do to advance their cancerous agenda. When the GOP has power, they won't even avail themselves of all of their lawful and constitutional powers to stand in the Democrats' way and defend us. The Democrats have just admitted they no longer wish to be Americans. It deserves a painful and swift response from the Republican Party A response, I'm afraid, folks, is never coming. Because where it is true, the Democrats will do anything, go full-blown terrorist to get their way. The GOP is not equally motivated to stop them. So as a conservative, absent any meaningful GOP leadership, I I guess I, your liberty-loving Latino, will have to say what needs to be said. To you, Chuck Schumer, and your anti-American party, You have done irreparable damage to the public trust, to the institution of the Senate, and to the Constitution. You may have the loyalty of weak Republicans, but your little club just lost the loyalty of the American people. History will not look favorably on your role in ripping our nation apart. 
as a result of your actions, our people will look at a Democrat party and its actions that are screaming that the law no longer applies to Democrats. And our people will rightly ask, so why does that law apply to us?